Hello and welcome. Uh, happy New Week. I wish you all, and uh, especially if you went to Tamale, then you know, an extra Happy New Week because suddenly it's all over. Yakans will say, Ejabo, Ejabo, Eja Ababidu. Uh, Tamale 2014 review, and that's what we're here to discuss. Almost all the incumbents were cleared, and new ones were brought, and all these questions are flying. Indeed, were they so dissatisfied with the old executives? It's just that they needed a new fresh face, and that's why they were. What was the reason behind it? Well, I don't know. I'm sure you have all these questions also flying about. With me in the studio today, as they promised, and they are back for us to discuss it to find out what's going to be the future for the NPP with the new executives. There's Nana Fridu Ajimayo Furiata, who's the second vice chairman of the NPP in the Eastern region. And then my immediate left is Atik Mohamed uh, of the PNC, a policy analyst. I have to get it right last time. He nearly killed me. My name is Nana Sakwa and this is PM Express. When we come back, we are talking Tamale. Hello, and we are looking at Tamale 2014, the review and the outcome. Some of the uh, shocking results, indeed, some of them were not surprised at the losses, but the margin at which some people lost. Uh, but we'll start by just broad, just an overview. I'll start with, Nanafredi, I'll start with you. Just an overview of, you know, Tamale. A success, well organized. You do it again if you had the chance, or there were things that well, you had to definitely. iron out. Tamale was a good choice. There's no doubt about it. It was a good choice. Um, you could tell in the atmosphere in, 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 in the city that it was the place to be for this function. So it was a good choice. And in terms of the political aesthetics, you know, like a good image for the party, I think it was a good choice. Um, with the general organization, I don't think it was as bad as it could be. You know, it wasn't bad at all. Um, eventually things got started. We started a little late. Um, we ended rather late. Um, but all in all, we got things going. Uh, speeches, the necessary speeches were made. A uh, bit of excitement here and there. People campaigning on the floor when they weren't supposed to. You know, those things that people try and do to get a little bit of an edge over the next. Uh, you know, those things are, for me, I'd find it dull if you didn't try to do that. So all in all, um, I think we had a successful Congress. I was happy. Do, do you think Tamale, was it, uh, because at this Tamale too, there was a lot of the uh, Dankwa Buzia Dombo, the Dombo became very prevalent. Do you think it was trying, you, you, the party was trying to get away with the stigma of it being a tree-speaking party that rather than even up, an account? That ended up being the, some of the speeches, but I didn't find it necessary. Um, we don't have an identity crisis. So I'm bothered when people try to link us. Um, if the quote-unquote enemy thinks that that's the way to get at us, it's for us to prove that they're wrong, and it isn't by being extremely defensive. So I, wouldn't, I was happy, for example, that uh, Mr. C.K. Tedda, um, an astute politician, uh, very respected and respectable, very credible, um, stood firm for decades on the side of democracy and on the side of uh, the NPP's type of democracy and our tradition um, was there. He gave us a background to the significance of being up in the north. Apparently, April 11th, I think, 1954, so uh, is when uh, uh, the Northern People's Party uh, came together to bring all kinds of people together. And I think that's when they were heading towards UP. I mean, he gave a breakdown of all the big names, including. Uh, Alaji Mumuni Baumia, the father of uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, um, um, the other big names like uh, uh, the uh, Abai Fakabo, Nabai Fakabo, SD Domo himself, uh, Jato Kalio, I mean, very powerful people who, if you read a bit about our history, and that's where, um, unlike uh, some other parties uh, who don't have a, a history, they, they never refer to it. <laughs> 
you know, we, we don't have a problem with our history because we know who we are. And so I, th I thought that that aspect of our program was good. It was a refresher course, if you will, on identifying who we are. And it worked well for the Tamale thing. As to whether we should be caught up in defending ourselves about the kind of party we are, I'm not bothered. We've won seats all over the country. True, we have strongholds in Ashanti and uh, East, Eastern, but so what? <laughs> other people have strongholds in other places, and that's how it works out. Um, so that's not the concern for people like me. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm very confident on for the party, so I don't have... I think, what, what's your view on, <coughs> this is general view on Tamale? Yeah, and I think that generally it was okay. The atmosphere was peaceful, and you know the city came alive with political expectations. There was this political energy, um, you know, that you could see in the city. And for me, it was telling that indeed the people of Tamale and by extension the people of the north are somewhat becoming very conscious about issues of politics. And what even intrigued me the most was the fact that you would have packets of people discussing, uh, guessing who is likely to win what, you know, making all kinds of predictions. And for me, it, it, it told me one story that these are people who are alive to the realities of our time and would not want to stay aloof from public life because this is one aspect or an expression of the many things that we often refer to as public life. Politics gives us opportunity to participate in public life and having that consciousness for me was very telling and very significant. Uh, beyond that, on the Congress ground itself, security, I should commend the security agencies for a very good job done. At some point, some of us were getting incensed at the meticulous nature that uh, the security agencies were doing their job. You had, I mean, they put almost everybody through some rigor of security checks or some rigorous security checks and I think it paid off at the end of the day. We, we, we hardly noticed any uh, unspeakable incident. I think everything was, was okay. But on the ground just some few things happened which I think could have been done better. Uh, the organization left a little to be desired or left, uh, you know, some things were left to, to give them a complete organization or some things uh, were yet to be done you know to make uh, yeah w they could have had a much better organization if those things were done seating arrangements for even invited guests at some point was becoming a problem but some of them rose to the occasion were able to sort those things out and another incident i observed which for me was particularly worrying in organization of events like this Everybody knows what to do at what point in time. I noticed that at the time the various political parties were invited to come and give their solidarity messages. Some candidates from nowhere just started walking in front of everybody, distracting for a moment that particular aspect of the activity. And for me, I felt it was disrespectful that you have invited people to come and give speech, I mean to come and solidarize with you, and indeed we were there. And as we were just doing that, somebody comes, causes distraction, and for me, it's marks of indiscipline. Look, there was a program. There was nowhere on that program. No, you need to be specific. This yeah, I'm talking about Kovnai Japan. There was nowhere on the program, at least the one which I had, that indicated that he would walk past everybody at the time fraternal messages were, were, were given. And it caused some distraction, which for me, uh, is marks of Maybe he turned up late. Sorry? Maybe he just turned up you, Why? We have entry points and exit points. Where he passed was neither an entry point nor an exit point. It was just to attract attention, regardless of what implications it had for the program and for the people you had invited. And for me, it's something that the organizers could have prevented. Beyond that, everything I want to say was, was fairly good. Um, the, the, the delegates themselves, you could see that they themselves were happy to be there you had all kinds of dignities. And I think it was more like a congregation of almost everybody, or at least those who matter very much in MPP. It was more like <coughs> a congregation okay. of those people. And it went fairly well. Uh, not, not every year. I mean, 
with the uh, old executive, what do we say? You know, good reasons or, my God, we've lost the jet. Well, it's more like the party moved on. Um, it's, it's never been the same where we've retained the chairman for two terms. We've never done that, as far as my history tells me. Uh, Mr. P.J. Darocha, Mr. Alajite, uh, Mr. Sagan. Uh, yes, Mr. Doe Sachs, Mr. Aroni Seku, Mr. Uh, Mark Menu, Mr. Beche Bilamte, and now it's come to Mr. Foko, and I'm sure he doesn't intend to go for more than four, ter four years. Um, so far, that's been the trend. So that's not necessarily the case. So in the case of the, the General Secretary, so well, is, is, the, is the issue here secretaries. then the magnitude of the rejection? Um, well, I don't know. You're the one raising the issue. As far as I'm concerned, the party's moved on. They've, we've elected uh, new officers. They, if it tells a new story, it means that the party is moving in a certain but direction. 66 out of 5,000 is, uh, uh, uh. you know. Well, uh, it's emphatic that we're moving on. You can say that. I mean, this is I running off. This is not moving on. This is literally mm -hmm. running, running away, as far away well, from here as possible. Well, we have four candidates. I'm, <coughs> I'm, I, I don't know that I'm interested in getting into, um, because really, the value is in the fact that the party has moved on. That's no, the value. I, 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 that, I, that I see what you want to talk yeah, about, and I'm what, saying that what, because for us as a party, mm -hmm. I, I'd be bothered if anybody in the party wanted to make it a talking point. We've moved on. <laughs> We've had some very great men who have also tried to run before and did lost. I mean, Mr. Ajani Mbwating of blessed memory, very solid general secretary. But when the party decided to move on, he lost the election. You cannot tell me that Professor Dubai was not a dynamic leader. But when the party decided to move on, he lost. So as far as I'm concerned, that can't be a problem for us. We just moved on. It doesn't belittle Mr. Becha Bilamte. As far as I'm concerned, I'd stand up for him any time. I was one of those people who campaigned for him in his first term. I didn't campaign for him this time around. Doesn't make him any less a man, because he's done his work. So it's just that the party moved on. We read the Ghanaian uh, uh, scene, and we moved on. I, I, I may bring a take in here now. <coughs> I say, 66 tells me that, I mean, I don't know at which point, but it means that his style of leadership, you know, the party really, 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 uh, we're not happy with it. I mean, if you look at, uh, if you look on the screen now, you know, Paula Foco, you know, 2,000, you know, and a bit over, Stephen in team, 1,500, Fred Owari, you know, 1,000, six, 60, I mean, it tells you that, you know, he's been wasting their time all this, all this while, but at which point, I don't know. <coughs> uh, remember the point that they've moved on, and it, it sounds so um, politically correct to use that I word. say run off. Yes, because this is not moving on. I do not see this as moving on. And he made the point that they gauged the Ghanaian scene and they realized that they needed to move on. Moving on, which, mean, I mean, which means they have to change their national chairman to the extent that, and I'm sure you are raising this concern because it's more like an embarrassment, that a sitting chairman could not even get 100 votes. So, and if this is the idea of moving on, I think that it's, it's a little problematic. But generally, I would say that I'm not too sure what Nana means by the gauged, the, 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 the atmosphere in Ghana, for which reason they decided to vote for the new chairman they have. You may say that, you know, all kinds of reasons accounted for the victory of Mr. Paul Afoko. But I very much doubt if it was a response to the kind of gauging he's talking about. Because there are several issues, and I'm sure, in, I'm sure in the coming days, people would begin to raise all kinds of issues in relation to the kind of leader he will be, uh, what he brings on board, and so on and so forth. But what actually made it easy for Mr. Foucault, if you ask me, is the fact that there were very strong contenders for the position of the national chairmanship. Each one of them had the tendency to win. But it appears... At some point, some two candidates were drawing their support from virtually the same constituency. And if you have such a situation and you don't manage it well, the tendency is you split your votes and you give the third party an opportunity to sail through. And that is exactly, if you ask me, what happened in the case of Mr. Paul Avoko. It is not necessarily a case that 
the NPP wanted to move on, and by moving on, it meant that Paula Foucault was the person to move the NPP on. Having said that, I will get the opportunity to sort that point out, won't I? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. But for me, I think what is even particularly important is what went on relative to the victory of Mr. Paula Foucault. I have had opportunities to discuss um, the MPP and their Congress and the various candidates. But you see, to lead a party, because if you become the, if you become the national chairman, once you are the party is in the position, you are said to be the leader of the party. I mean, what prior contributions can you pinpoint at that qualify um, Mr. Foucault to be that person you can say has actually been with the party from day one or has actually paid his dues? I'm struggling very hard to find out what his well, prior his contribution is. did, he Do stood the ground and meaning? called for, you know, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, d democratic governance and, oh. you know. You see, the, sometimes these are exaggerated claims. But let me not even get into that. In the days of PNDC, a lot of people made calls for democratization. They were not necessarily MPP people. And I'm talking about somebody who at some point has either served as a committee member or, I mean, has paid his dues as far as the party's evolution is concerned. I hardly see that in Mr. Paula Foucault. But that, just, that is not to say that he will not be a fantastic chairman. But one funny thing that I also think the MPP is glossing over and which may come back to be a very major issue for them to contend with is they may say they have done their due diligence on the various candidates. Sometimes, you see, now, and let me use Nanado as an example, it is going to be difficult for the opponents of Nanado to use the very things they used against him in 2008 and 2012 because they will become trite by the time we get into 2016. Now, you have fresh executives. People are going to do fresh digging. People are going to ensure that everything negative about these people, they will bring them up. Now, and I'm not sure the MPP will be too enthused going to 2016. Instead of focusing on their campaign, a lot of their time will be spent on doing damage control on the negativities that may be brought upon the images of their uh, various executives. But with old ones, and I'm not by this saying that the old ones should have been maintained. That is the decision of the MPP. They know, like Nana said, they want to move on, even though the idea of moving think, on could is you quickly really add this to your submission before I bring the night. Uh, with the uh, unpopularity <coughs> of Jake, that, you know, his bridge house that he bought, you know, I personally think there was a loophole in the system. And instead of using his influence to block the loophole, he took advantage of it. And you know, so instead of campaigning yeah. to say, look, state-owned state, state -owned houses should not be dispersed of this way, he said, well, if there's a loophole, let me buy it. So even though he didn't break the rule, I personally think, you know, he took advantage of, of, of a system that had a loophole and could, you know, that. Could we, that we think the MPP punished him for that. I'm not asking, because he brought them uh, well, by as far as I can tell, on the Congress ground, the issues were not very much about their contributions to the general sustainability of the NPP or to our democracy. That, I mean, the issues really were not about that. I heard all kinds of, for want of a better expression, ludicrous uh, reasons for which people should vote for some candidates as, oh, the, the tradition is, is, is more like it is it, it, a tripod. You have the Dumbu, the Buzia, the Dumbu. The Buzi and Dumbu have had their turn. It is time. And I found that extremely ludicrous. <laughs> Why? Since 1992, almost all the running mates to the candidates of um, the MPP presidential, I mean to the MPP presidential candidates, have been ordinary. So if you want any adequate representation of the Dumbu bit of your tradition, I think that, I mean, that, that, that perfectly answers that. You don't have to be a national chairman to give the impression that the party is now embracing or is now giving the Dumbo bit a, a representation in their scheme of things. But that is what was on the ground. I seem to say that if you do not vote for one candidate who is campaigning on that ticket, what it means is that this party will continue to be stigmatized as an Akam party. It has little or no regard for the Dumbo bit, even though it was the three who let me work bring, together uh, to, let to me build bring, this. Let me bring I, I, I mean, to there were that. a lot of considerations, <laughs> considerations, and I'm sure we'll get to discuss what happened, whether there were inducements, as far as I can tell, yes, or we, not. Yes, we're definitely going to get to the uh, inducement bit. Uh, 
<laughs> I don't know where, where Atik went and bought his gloves this afternoon. But he's... Uh, ah. uh, <laughs> I bought them on the, on the, on the, on the MPP market. <laughs> The first thing that I'd like to clear is when I said that we've read the Ghanaian public, it was specifically to do with your particular point about uh, Mr. Peter mm. Um We need to move on, we need to move on. And that's what it was. It didn't necessarily mean that we're going to end up with Mr. Afoko or Mr. Owari or Mr. Ntimu. <clears throat> but it seemed like the general package for the total, for everybody, seemed to be that way. Um, people made their choices. Eventually, this is where we ended up. As far as the image of the executive is concerned, um, I think that ultimately we're going to end up, well, I'm looking forward to the fact that we will be a strong party. Um, the personalities we have, I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Jake's house, did it? Do you think I, have no, I, I, I don't even know where you're picking that up from. I doubt it. It doesn't work at all in our party. They're not going to chase him for a house. <laughs> so, a black one and uh, Omani Buama and the NDC who are interested in those things and they're able to build an image in the public for Mr. Benji Pilante to look bad. But I wonder what they're doing now, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure that will come up one day very soon. Okay. So that's not uh, for me. Uh, I'm sure the NDC will have, has quite a bit of luggage they want to hide right now. Um, so for me, the big image about our executive relative to the election, typically, I don't know that uh, the party executives affect uh, the image of the party when you enter the ballot, uh, the mm -hmm. poll booth. But they do play a major role in how we get to the poll booth. Now, <coughs> Mr. Fuku, the truth is that I really don't know his track record with regard to you know, internal party work. But as is he a good financier? We are um, by But well, my point is that at this point, he's chairman of the party. Whatever happens, he has a base to depend on in taking a decision. When he speaks, he will not have spoken off the cuff or per his own, or only his thinking. He would have spoken based on consultation. So one would expect that he'll be able to uh, carry that through. If uh, his style, as we observed it on the airwaves, is anything to go by. Mr. Japong. He's been around from the very beginning. He was, he's a founding member of the party. Um, Governor Japon's history, as far as standing, I mean, he's at one time at the age 36, he stood for vice chairman. And then I know that um, he helped uh, in the Kufuado's campaign in 98. I think I have uh, Mr. Foko's speech at the, uh, uh, the Congress. Let's listen to uh, what, what he says and then we can pick something from it. I have had the opportunity to interact with all of you, and if you do remember, I constantly referred to the other contestants for the position of national chairman as my brothers whenever I came round to campaign. All along when I came round, I said, make your choice. You make the choice as if you are sitting in a restaurant picking an a la carte menu put the team together and, f and force us as a team to work united to take this party back to power in 2016. You've given us your marching orders. You have told us that we must work together as a team and that we must deliver power in 2016. So the only thing I can now say to you is that we have heard you we have accepted we, by, by getting sworn in we have accepted the order and now it is your turn. Please, as you go home, prepare for government. Prepare for power. Thank you. <coughs> well, okay, let, let, me, let me take a break here and then when we come back. But the speech was very uninspiring. Maybe he was tired, but when we come back, we'll talk it about it. It was three in the morning. Then we will forgive him, but stay tuned, we're coming back. <laughs> I have had the opportunity to interact with all of you, and if you do remember, I constantly referred to the other contestants for the position of national chairman as my brothers 
whenever I came round to campaign. All along when I came round, I said, make your choice. You make the choice as if you are sitting in a restaurant picking an a la carte menu. Put the team together and, f and force us as a team to work united to take this party back to power in 2016. You've given us your marching orders. You have told us that we must work together as a team and that we must deliver power in 2016. So the only thing I can now say to you is that we have heard you, we have accepted, we, by, by getting sworn in, we have accepted the order, and now it is your turn. Please, as you go home, prepare for government, prepare for power. Thank you. Well, so now we have our new a la carte executives. I don't know who's the order, who's the dessert, but I'm sure we've, the MPP have already selected the a la carte executives here. And I'm sure, now Freddy, I'll come to you before I move on. We have our president, uh, general Ch secretary. Ch chicken soup for start. You know, chicken <laughs> soup. For, chicken and sweet corn soup. No, but I, th I think that his point was rather clear. You know, it's like you have a selection. You've made, now they've made a selection, so they're ready to work. And he's calling for us to join him because he's going to play his part and I guess he's saying that the team will play their part and that's what we should expect from them. Um, for me, the, I was just trying to talk about the image of the executive because um, I think Atik raised that issue in his earlier points or earlier statements. Ultimately, it's not going to be just about any one individual unless that person has a terrible record somewhere we didn't know about. It's going to be about how we as a team, from polling station through to constituency, to the executives, to the national, work together to make sure that our candidates are succeed. And this time around, I think what people might want to create or give the impression of as being the most contentious thing is actually probably going to be the easiest thing to do, which is determining who our flag bearer is. <laughs> I mean, I, there's no doubt about it that we're bringing in an Equifado. There's no question in our minds. Others will come and contest, and we don't have the authority to stop them. It is part of our party's uh, principles and philosophy to encourage anybody who feels that they're capable to come forward. Well, so it's not, it's not, it's not, not threading on, you know, uncharted territories now, because all the executives have openly, you know, backed Tremonte, you know, Paula Foko has been even accused of actually dishing out money for people to vote for Chairman mm. Ting. Mm. Uh, you know, the general secretary was part of his campaign team. It's not the case. We're um, talking about an executive that says Mr. Foko is chairman. You want, to assign, chairman you want to assign him to Mr. Chairman Ting, that's fine. The first vice chairman is Mr. Freddie Blay. You cannot assign him to Mr. Chairman Ting. The second vice chairman is Mr. Crabb. You cannot assign him to Mr. Chairman Ting. Mr. F. F. Anto, you cannot assign him to Chairman Ting. Uh, Kwabna, you can. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, 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 John Bodu, you cannot. Samir Uku, you cannot. Utiko, you cannot. So what are we <laughs> talking about? So there's a bank a bank a bank a <coughs> you cannot. Um, and even in this instance, we're talking about some time past. We've come into a new phase. Um, a point was made on one of the radio stations this morning. I thought it was a good point. Mr. B.J. Darwacha, of blessed memory, great, great, great chairman. As far as I'm concerned, he's been our strongest chairman in terms of conserving the party, making it what it was supposed to be, at the most crucial time in our uh, tradition's history. Uh, he, stood, he, he was known to support a candidate. That candidate didn't win. Mr. Alajiti was known to support a candidate. His candidate didn't win. It did nothing bad to the party, and it didn't discredit those chairmen. So if for any reason Mr. Foucault is still a Mr. Chairman Tim person, it takes nothing from him. The, it is the party that decides. I'm sitting here telling you I'm an Akufuado person. If the party doesn't want Akufuado, what am I going to do? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Within my own small uh, capacity and my territory, what am I going to do if my party says no? So it's more about what the party and therefore the public, the Ghanaian public says that we're going to work with. Let me, I think, a uh, quick reaction, then we'll move on to uh, the uh, General Secretary. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I think that... And like you said, the a la carte speech, I think, was a little not, not inspiring. inspiring. Yeah. 
But did you say it was uninspired? Yeah, I said it was uninspired. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. I, I thought that it was... No, well, I also think it was uninspired. It was, it was, it was but then again, it was 3 a.m., so we give him that. It was yeah, 3 a.m. After, I mean, after a long day's I mean, the inspiration so is not... we're waiting not for the next speech. The inspiration <laughs> is, is, is... I mean, the fact that it's not inspiring, it's not stemming from the fact that he was not shouting. Mm. But the content is what determines the inspiration. And mm. to that extent, it doesn't matter... How early or how late it was, yeah. the content, if it, if it, it had to be inspired, it would have Let's, let's, well, let's, we are, let's yeah. not even debate that. Yeah. It's not the most important <laughs> thing is, is the Alakar speech. The import I'm getting from that is that he's inviting everybody else on board, that the delegates who empowered him to become the chairman should rally behind him and make them achieve their shared object, mm -hmm. which is winning 2016. But you see, as a chairman and with such stigma around you, that you are an avowed supporter of one candidate who has, for very strange, if you ask me, strangely declared two days before the Congress that he wanted to run again, after losing on two occasions to Nanado, who has also indicated yet his intention to run again. It tells you, and the commentary that came after the election, Alan Shermantin and Co. now claiming that the ground has been leveled. For me, as an outsider, I would read some meanings into those comments. But as to whether indeed as executives you can hold a sway over the entirety of the party to determine who becomes your flag bearer for me is another matter. But they could frustrate your efforts in, in, in wanting to become the, the flag bearer of the party. It happened some time ago, in fact, in their own party, when somebody, I think somewhere in 2004, expressed their interest to want to run, but said, complained about the timing. But because of the kinds of executives who were then at post, he did not have the timing he was seeking, you know, fixed. So it discouraged him or so that could, it, it they, they could if they want to exactly. make, you know. Let's, let's move on to the uh, general secretary. And uh, again, I'll start with Nana Fridia that, I mean, clearly, I mean, Sir John is not MPP. Is I mean, <laughs> MPP is supposed to be all prim, proper, gentlemanly, not abusive, not give and take. That is the perception of MPP. Then all of a sudden, here you are with the general secretary who is in contempt of court, who says, you've insulted me, let me insult him back. So you say, good readings to that. What would you say? I'd say it's not fair to Sir John. I met Sir John before he became general secretary. And I'll stand up for him any day. I don't think that uh, he's a bad person. I don't think that he's a disrespectful person. I don't think that he's uncouth. I don't think any of those things that oh, people... Oh, like unless that. he had a different character that he played in the media. Well, maybe you know him what I'd like to say is that it's interesting that the media finds it all right for Mr. Mosquito to say things like uh, there's some 17 thieves running for president and the media doesn't say a word. And then when Mos uh, uh, Sir John responds, then he's a bad man. I don't understand that. So when it's time, if you won't fight for me, I'll fight for myself. And you, the media, are supposed to protect the public. And when you fail, the rest of us have to do it. And that's what happened. But are you so saying in the instances are you, when are you in saying your general secretary was too low had, to I, General Mosquito? I, you want to call it low? You, you made the General Mosquito look good. You never say bad things about General Mosquito. He says all the bad things and nobody says anything. Well, but the, the, the issue here <laughs> is bad. Yeah, I don't know, I'm so saying when he says bad things and it's affecting people and it's affecting our culture and our image as a country, and you don't respond. Somebody has to. So if Sir John takes it up, I have no problem with that. No, I supported Sir John throughout the four years on that particular score. I was very happy with the fact that he was doing that. It was a collective decision that the party saw. That when, especially with the Kufuado, there were constant attacks on his person. Insulting him, creating all kinds of images about him. All the media, for example, who should be protecting the public, forget about the NPP, did, was watch on and encourage it. So when we took a conscious decision, and I was part of those uh, choices, I wouldn't use the same words, I wouldn't say some certain things, I won't act a certain way, but I didn't think that if you needed to defend yourself, you shouldn't. <laughs> you know, so if in the process, Sir John carried his, uh, his position and took it to the likes of Mr. Mosquito, eventually if we did really truly study the terrain, Mr. Mosquito slowed down. And it wasn't because the media helped us. It's because Sir John took it to him. The only problem you can argue from, and from my background as a communication person, I can say that after a while you need to read the public. So it got to a stage at the public, especially in 2013. The public 
because a lot of us believe that the public went for Kufuado. And so now you didn't have to do anything extra. So when you did do something extra, then it became a bit nauseating. So I don't fault the public on that. But really, does that make Sir John? He's become a victim of circumstances of sorts. Maybe he could have controlled himself a little. I, can't, I won't say no, but I'll stand up for him any day on that particular thing. And that's where the rest of us Ghanaians need to begin to look at these things. When somebody is doing something that's bad for our image and our culture, we need to all stand up and fight, fight against it. You know, we shouldn't just wait for somebody to become a victim of circumstances. And so for me, that was, that's the thing. Um, my candidate was Sir John. He lost. Kobne Japon is not a bad person. In fact, Kobne Japon has a lot of credit. There's yes. more MPP, yes, though. No. I mean, if you know. I don't what think I'm that Sir John is any less MPP. MPP. <laughs> there's, nothing like no, I, I, I there's nothing like that. I don't know. There's nothing like that. You see, politics is about perception. I don't, I don't know. Either, that I don't one. know either of That's these gentlemen. That's our dispute. Yeah, I don't know either of these gentlemen personally. Yeah. I've never met them personally. But the perception I sit but here it, it, and you know. know yeah. if but you know, I but Rana, you know what, what you're also showing. Yeah. You're also showing that the so-called Buklong perspective of uh, perception mm -hmm. of NPP mm -hmm. uh, is acceptable. And yet, mm -hmm. when the NDC says it, you say, oh, they are right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the contradiction no, in terms. I don't think you have to apologize for trying to lift. You see, my, issue, my, my, my problem is, I'm just laying out I don't what, have a problem in lifting somebody up high. I have a problem in bringing people down low. Mm -hmm. that, that's where I have an issue. So right. if somebody is uh, book long or rich and is able to no, help no, people no, no, to no, come no, up. No, no, you're dropping the ocean on, uh, no, when it comes to these types of no, things. No, no, no. The reality on the ground, and that's the other side that you have reflected, <laughs> which is th that side out there that we're a Buklong party. Mm -hmm. uh, we look good, good. You know, we won't wear Batakari, we this and that mm -hmm. and the other. That one out there it's, it's taken negatively when we put on our coats and things. And yet when some people who claim, who are the ones who push that agenda, come and are wearing the coat, suddenly it's all right. So and then when suddenly, when now we bring uh, 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 all one. sides, <laughs> all the sides, we have all uh, well rounded I think yeah, because they don't can I, wear, I, I am saying wear Jeremy and the the t shirts and everything. To me, and he can wear you know, shoes. from where I stand, you know, it's more MPP than uh, you know, uh, Sir John. Um, before I, I, I come to that, let me just quickly say that. Um, the chairman, I just wanted to conclude on the chairman. I think he has a test case, which is the organization of the flag bearership contest. And I just want to hope that the call he made on the delegates, that everybody's hand should be brought on leg. I just want to hope that he actually gives effect to that comment he made. Because the MPP at this point, look, like it or not, the factionalism thing has come to play. And it is it is it lies within him to ensure that that thing comes to an end because it is not helpful to the cause of the MPP. And he, as the chairman who is taxed to be supporting one candidate or to be supporting a, a, a prospective presidential candidate, for me, he has an opportunity to bring to an end this needless and protracted talk about the MPP being split between two, you know, uh, fighting factions. Having said that, on the issue of the uh, general secretaryship, as an outsider, I made my point very clear that look, and it is, I mean, I was interested in the general secretaryship contest of the MPP because of my peculiar position. As somebody operating in opposition, I keep making the point that it gets to a point, opposition forces operate as a unit. Because everything you see is directed at the sitting president, is directed at the government in, in office right now or at the party in office right now. So it gets to a point there is commonality of ground amongst parties in opposition. Yeah. And when that happens, politics, they say, is both a game of competition and cooperation. So when you are in op opposition, you tend to cooperate a lot more than when one party is in power and you are in opposition. F to that extent, you would require to have somebody who can be a little cooperative. Because there are times you would require every other party in opposition operating together. Well, hold and on there. Let's find out if that is going to pause. I'll take a break here and we'll find out if we can get the opposition working together against the common enemy, if I may say. Stay tuned. As I always remind you that the Easter Soup Kitchen, uh, they're still taking donations, so get in touch uh, with the Joy FM front desk and whatever it is that you can provide. 
uh, food, clothing, stuff for babies, do that. And I say that, that one day in a, in a year that a destitute person can also have some clean clothes, warm food and good health, it uh, would go a long way. And as the advert always says, that these things are pleasing to God. But just before we went on the break, we're seeing about how the opposition will work as one unit. Indeed, will the other opposition parties maybe work with Paula Foucault? I don't know if that's what you're trying to. <coughs> the point I, I'm, I was talking about the general secretary. You see, I've been in opposition for quite some time, and I've had <laughs> the opportunity. Oh, no, no, it's not funny. I mean, it's not exciting being in opposition. <laughs> but the truth is, I've been there, mm -hmm. and I've had the opportunity to work with other parties then in opposition, and it worked. In 2000, how did the MPP win? Because you had a congregation of all opposition parties saying that. Look, Ghanaians are tired of this long reign of PNDC and DC. The time had come for them to change. And unanimously and collectively, they ensured that that happened. In 2008, you'd re even though the other opposition parties were not very unanimous in their decisions as to which party to back, but majority of individuals in those parties decided that they were going to support the NDC, and that worked. And I'm saying that there are times you would need to cooperate as entities in opposition. And for that to happen, for me, I think it is always conditioned on how accessible, how ready and cooperative the general secretary, because he's the heartbeat of the party, of the biggest opposition party is, and how receptive he is to this whole idea of receptive. cooperation. Receptive. I upon his posture. Uh, people have you know, commented about his posture. Some say he's rude, some say he's brash. You know, uh, not yes, personable. I, 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 but I, yeah, I, I think this is such an unfair assessment of. of no, 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 no. I mean, no, they, 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 they are observers and they are right. No, they, they, they are right. No, 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 because the, sub, no, the, sub, the, ma the substantive it's matter you're raising, which is that if it came down to negotiating a situation so that we could all move together to secure this country and take them out of this uh, rut we're in with the NDC uh, and its government, we need to cooperate with the PNC, we need to cooperate with the uh, CPP, uh, PPP. You know, and any strong party out there. You're saying that Kwabena Japan will not know how to do that. I and I'm saying that I, I find that strange. Well, if for nothing else, Kwabena Japan has a strong track record of being in opposition with the PNC and NPP, <laughs> working together to ensure that elections go smoothly. Uh, if you remember, in 1996, there was an alliance between the NPP and... Uh, uh, PNC was not part. Uh, no, it wasn't PNC. Uh, CP, what, the, it uh, was then the CP. Was it CP? The CP, uh, the Convention Party. Right. With uh, Mr. Akar. To form the Popular Alliance. Is what I'm saying. Or was it NCP? That I was not was for NCP. nothing. And somewhere in there, Governor Japan, young as he was at the time, was involved on some level. And appreciates fully those things. I'll stand up for him on that score any day. So no, I'd, I'd, no, no. I'd, I'd say that is, that's... that's uh, you're jumping the gun. There's no evidence. No, I, I was building a point. If you had allowed me, I'm sure you would understand what I'm saying. And look... The point I was making, and that is, I was trying to explain to you why I felt Sir John would have been a better general secretary for the MPP. Look, you don't wait until a crisis situation, then you want to bring people together. It doesn't work that way. When it happens, and I think the MPP has had that experience. In 2008, people waited until it got to the crunch, then they were reaching out to other opposition parties. It wouldn't work that way. And people have complained about interpersonal relations. Nobody is actually interested in having friendship or having any relationship with anybody. Because at the end of the day, there are so many friends that you, you, do, you hardly even have time for and so on. But everybody is focused on the bigger picture. And the person in question should be receptive. I'm not saying that everybody is amenable to change. If the concern, and largely so, has been that Governor uh, Japan has issues with his relationship with others. And I've heard other people justify that relationship, saying that, oh, arrogance shows that he can be firm. There's a difference between being firm and being arrogant. And some have actually admitted that he is and that it's a good trait. Nobody finds arrogance a virtue. And I think that I'm not saying he is, but this is the perception out there. Going forward... And and it's not, it's not a true, correct perception. Oh, because Kapoor Japan was press secretary to President Kufour. And, that and in his time as press secretary to President Kufour, the image that Kapoor Japan had, had nothing to do with being but seen as that, obnoxious that's or that's where that perception came from. That's so. That is where it that's began. Are you sure? Okay, no, 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 I doubt it. Nobody... He he was, I don't have... He was... He was, was no, 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 the word no, 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 perception. Yeah, I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. I doubt that, that there was a perception Well, there. that is your doubt. But the general because perception the, the by the public, public is that... The public talks... At least when I hear... When I listen to radio and other... 
When people referred to Governor Dupont's role as a press secretary, they liked it. They liked him well, as a well, press secretary. Well, this is the first time I'm getting... Well, nobody's questioning his competence as somebody who handled the communication of the presidency. Nobody, that is not in that. But you needed to have a good... Uh, no, you, need, you don't have to have... He, he any, you don't image. have to have good personal relations with the media for you to issue press releases, for you to grant interviews. You don't need to oh, have that. Oh, but you do. You don't. Yes, uh, you look, do. Look, yes, you do. The media is interested in the stories. They are inter interested in And news. a little more. And so far as it is coming from you, it doesn't matter whether the person is in good terms with you, whether you relate very well with the person or not. The person is interested in the news. That's the person's job. No. He doesn't care it how is. you he does. Yes, he does. But this is my field. I'm telling you, yes, he does. But, but it's no, no, important. No, 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 have you heard, it's have you very heard, important. Have you heard this out there before? He must have. No, he that Kwame's uh, posture not is a bit brash. His brashness has nothing to do with what Atik no, is trying Atik to is not, Atik is and not that brashness, his competence. And that brashness not. is at what point in time? When I've encountered Kabna and he, he gets into what they're calling brash, it's when somebody is doing something out of order. When I have that is the point I was making. They try to now, justify that attitude by saying it is being what's firm. Wrong with that? It is, uh, look, every one of us, I do not want to believe that Nana understands his attitude better than the bigger public. Because it is not just one person, it is not two people. It is, and perception grows, it is not just a one-off event. It has to be trendy for it to be concluded that this is the perception out there. And it means he must have had that relationship with a lot of people. Nana, if I may. Okay. He must have had that relationship with a lot of people for them to come to that conclusion and for it to constitute a perception. I am not saying, you know, it, you may, if the MPP, and that is the point I was making. Some people in MPP regard that as a virtue, it is a trait, it's a positive. And for me as an opposition entity, I don't see that as a virtue. And that's why I would have liked to have for the MPP a general secretary who, despite everything else, is accessible, is that person who does not roam about with, the tag, with that tag. And you remember, your presidential candidate has been a victim of this stigma. That is arrogant, even, in, even though indeed, look, he's the finest man you can ever find. But it's a stigma that works against him in both elections. So at this point in time, you don't need to have somebody who is coming to sell your presidential candidate and you are hoping no, no, that no. Nana gets the nod. No, no. If he does, mm -hmm. Kobna Japan's perceived arrogance is going to either reinforce or open up a dead wound as far as Nana's attitude and posture in public life is concerned. No, I think you were about I don't want, I don't think yes, you I want will. to first of all, <laughs> First of all, nobody, nobody, for the third time, nobody's image or whatever is going to affect the Kufar. Well, nobody. Hmm. It's going to the collective so NPP. I, I do not know. The, I mean, the I collective don't want NPP to body mm -hmm. is the only body that matters in the, on, on the Kufuado ticket to the Ghanaian public. Mm -hmm. But individuals in the party, nobody. Is it not going to tag the party at mm -hmm. all? The, the 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 energy, the feeling, the the the, the weight that. Is, is in the support of a Kufuado is such that I mean what hasn't the NDC done? R I mean, if we were to do a, 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 a drawdown of the things they've tried to do, to them. and now people have built walls around them, not even the, they, they built walls but around the NDC. Was, was around yeah. So my point is, as far as the totality of the team is concerned, from we've we've done a very good job. I call this phase two of the party. Phase one was polling station constituency and region. We've done that. Phase two is this one. We're going to phase three. Uh, I call it the Kufuado phase. Once we're done with that, the Ghanaian public is waiting for us. And as far as I'm concerned, the MPP is coming on strong. People are going to see what they want and more. We're going to give them a good understanding of what it was that we dreamt for them. From 2000 when we came into office through to 2008 when we supposedly lost. You lost, lost. No, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, as far as but some uh, of us are concerned. See that. So no, it's not, a, we're, we're, we're coming on strong. That's the individual image of one the executive party is going to give may not to reflect the people on the bigger picture. But you see, but people who are closer with the team, who have worked with the team in 2008, 
will tell you that the attitude of some individuals around Akufuado actually cost him support from other parties. And I'm telling you, you I this think that, that <laughs> it is going to happen. But I'm saying that this is part three. Well, but I, 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 I can only wish you well. We have to serialize this, this topic now. <laughs> and, and, and expect. <laughs> well, folks, we're looking know. at uh, Tamale and the outcome. But you know about you know I think we congratulate the party for you know such an organisation. I mean to put all these people together must be huge logistics. So you know congratulations. Congratulations to them. I've been talking to Nana Friedia Ajimayo Foriata, uh, second vice chairman, MPP Eastern Region, and uh, Atik Mohamed, PNC, and also a policy analyst. And as I always say, we'll be back tomorrow to do it all over again. But let me remind all my folks in Edumasa, Ajinapese, and all surrounding that Easter is coming. Uh, and children coming over to Abombe. Yes, I'm giving you a, a busload of kids to Abombe. Good show. <laughs> the public so, is invited Easter, to come to Abombe for Easter. It's a children's festival there. Okay, and what date? Friday, eighteenth. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, eighteenth. Well, there you go. Bring your children there. If you have any kids, uh, it's Bombay the only East. village in Ghana where they celebrate Easter for children. Well, there you go. So uh, watch this space, and all the uh, details will be coming soon. Tomorrow we'll be back to do it all over again. Thanks for watching.